Wakia is the thunder being and represents cleansing. Wakia is a being that is both genders at the same time. I could say a hermaphrodite. Now this is not transgender, this is not transsexual, this is not homosexual, this is something completely different. A hermaphrodite is a person who's both male and female at the same time. There are humans who are born this way, and this is very special, this is sacred. But in the Western world, people regard them as freaks, and they make fun of them. Some of them, they don't understand why they are this way, because the Bible says something like, this is evil. Or other cultures may have a, another explanation that may not be good either. But in the Lakota world, it's a very sacred, sacred thing. It's very sacred. And with Wakia, when Wakia presents itself as female, then it's Wakia. That's Wakia. This is the female representation of this sacred being. And she comes to cleanse the earth, so she represents cleansing. And anything that is out of balance, she will cleanse it. And the cleansing is accomplished by lightning, it's accomplished by thunder, the noise, the boom, you know, all of that, that's all cleansing. What it does for the ground, it puts nitrogen in the ground so that things can grow. And sometimes a fire might happen, but that's okay. Because from the fire, nitrogen is going to go into the ground so that things can grow. So these are some ways that she cleanses the earth. And many years ago, the people were under the earth. They were just created. And there was a, a giant bear who wanted to become a member of an organization called Wakantanka. Now today in the Christian world, Lakota Christian people, they define Wakantanka as God, as a one supreme being. But this is false. That's a Christian definition that's tainting a, a very sacred organization. It's a group Wakantanka is a group of people. And this bear, he wanted to become a member of that. He was a very giant bear, and he walked upright, so they called him Hu Num. Hu means legs, and Num is short for Numpa, which means two. So this is the reason why we consider bears two-legged. Among creation, Lakota ancient Lakota people categorize everything into four categories. And this can be as the winged, so anything that flies. That's one group, and they're called Hupahu. And then we have the four-legged, and these are Hutopa. And then the two-legged, which are bears and humans. And that which moves and grows, they call it. Dakushkan. So that's plants, other animals that don't fit into the other categories. They fit into this one. So that's just a little description. That's called Wamakhashka, the whole thing. So we're a part of it. We are a part of Wamakhashka, whereas Christians believe that humans are above everything else. But in the Lakota world, humans are a part of everything. We are not above it. So... This giant bear wants to join this organization called Wakantanka, and he has an idea. Oftentimes, he sleeps or he pretends to sleep outside the meeting area where these Wakantanka meet, and he listens to what they say. So from this activity, he learns their songs, and then he has an idea. He's going to talk to the people under the earth, and he's going to teach them some of these songs. And he taught them how to make drums and rattles, and then he taught them one of the songs of the Wakantanka. And he said, they're going to really like it. 
the Wakantanka are really going to like it that you're singing their song. So the leader of the people, they're going to want to make him a member of the Wakantanka. And the leader's name at that time was Tatanka. That's just a name. At this point, it's just a name because at this point, there's no buffalo yet. Because a lot of people think Tatanka means buffalo. But at this time in the story, there are no buffalo yet. They're not created yet. So at this time, Tatanka is just a name. And by the way, Tatanka means buffalo bull. Buffalo is Ptechchaka. But in this point in time, there's no buffalo yet. This leader, his name is Tatanka. The people, when they lived under the earth, they are called Pte Oyate. They're not human, but they're not animal either. There's something different. But they're human in form. Like us, they have arms and legs and things like that. Anyway, the Pte Oyate leader, his name is Tatanka. And this bear is saying that when you guys are going to sing this Wakantanka song, the Wakantanka are really going to like it. And they're going to ask the Pte Oyate leader to become a member of this organization. And the plan will be that he will only accept it if the bear is allowed to join too, because the bear taught them these songs. This was the plan. So the leader of the Pte people, the people under the earth, he agreed to it. This Tatanka, he agreed to it. So then the bear showed Tatanka how to make drums and rattles. He taught them the song. And then in turn, Tatanka taught the people how to do this. And the bear said that when they meet nearby, the bear said he would tell them when to start singing and playing the drum. So you have hundreds of thousands of people here. You can imagine there's a lot of drums, <laughs> a lot of drums and rattles. So they were all proceeding to make their drums and rattles. And in the meantime, Hunum was following these Wakatanka in their meetings, pretending to sleep outside of where they were meeting. And all that time he's listening. So he's learning their ways. <laughs> the bear is learning the ways of the Wakantanga. Anyway, so now it's going to be time. They're going to have a meeting near where the Pte people are living. And so the bear comes and tells Tatanka, okay, start singing. So they all get their drums and they start singing this song. And women are standing there with the rattles around the drum and they're shaking the rattles while the men are drumming and everybody is singing this song. You hear this boom, 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 really loud. Because imagine that. Several hundred thousand people drumming at the same time under the earth. The earth is going to (laughs) move. So the first one to hear this was Wakia, the thunder being. She heard this and she thought maybe it's another Wakia. So she flew trying to find the sound and she was able to locate it. And then she went under the ground to see what was going on. And she saw all these people playing their drums and singing this song. It's a very beautiful song. It's a song of thanksgiving, is is what they were singing. And so she let them finish. Because in Lakota, when you sing a, a song, you sing it at least four times. So she let them finish. When a thunder being is in your presence, you don't make eye contact. This is where our tradition comes from, of not looking people in the eyes. It's a sign of respect. And I'll explain to you why in a little bit, okay? But she said to them, she was really happy. And the people were scared. They were so scared because there's a thunder being standing there. Yeah? And and they're really scared. And she says, you really, really made me feel good. And I'm going to give power to your drums to clean, 
to cleanse the area. So when she did this, something happened to all their drums. Now they have the power of walking out. So she said, anytime you're feeling sad, anytime you're feeling lonely, lonesome, or troubled, disturbed, she said, beat the drum. Just beat the drum. You don't even have to sing. She said, just beat the drum in a steady beat, and it'll go away. So none of this, you know, none of that, just boom, 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 boom. And not the Hollywood beat either. Yeah, not that boom, 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 boom. <laughs> it's supposed to be a steady beat. And the sound of the drum is going to cleanse the area. And if you don't have a drum, use rattles because it does the same thing. And if you don't have rattles either, then clap your hands. That noise is what cleanses the area. That's what we learned from there. Very beautiful. Then she talks to the leader, Tatanka, and she says, I want to bring you before the council, the Wakantanka council, and I'm going to tell them what happened, and maybe they'll make you a member of their Wakantanka. So the leader, Tatanka, he says, good. So they went to this Wakantanka council. The Wakantanka were really impressed. And they asked Tatanka Dukte Oyate, leader, to become a member of this organization. And Tatanka would only accept it if the bear is allowed to join too, because the bear taught them these songs. And they talked about this, and the Wakantanka were really impressed. And so they made both of them Wakantanka. Tatanka Dukte Oyate, leader and also Hunum, the giant bear. He was made a member. So they were given responsibilities. Hunum, the giant bear, is the representation of wisdom. And Tatanka is to protect the chastity of women. He's kind of like the guardian of women. It's a very beautiful, very, very beautiful story. So that's how we got the drum. This is how the drum is used for healing. And like I said, even if you're feeling bad to hit the drum, same thing. You can do that there too. Rattles, same thing. So that shows you the cleansing nature of Wakia and her power. Now, there was a time where... Some creatures were created by a woman who lives in the water, and they were created to cause trouble because something happened to her, and it was unjust. She received an injustice from the earth, because at this time, the earth was very immature. The earth was brand new, very young, and often made mistakes, and was very temperamental. She was like a spoiled little kid. And she threw this woman in the water. Her name was Unk. And Unk was very beautiful, friendly, but the earth became jealous and threw her in the water and made her stay there. And Unk didn't do anything wrong. So she wanted to cause trouble for the earth. So she created these beings to go on the earth and cause trouble for the earth. So these beings can live on the earth, and they can also live in the water. So you can imagine what those are. And some of them are giants. They're called Unkche Ri, or Unkche Ri La. So when these beings, these Unkche Ri, when they were coming on the earth, boy, they were causing problems. So when any time an Unkche Ri came on the earth, Wakia would go and destroy it because she's cleansing. Unkjeri cause problems. They cause trouble. They bring contention. And they really stink. So they smell disturbing. They make you disturbed. When you smell their odor, it really makes you disturbed. The 
desert. It's how bad they smell. So Wakina would destroy them to cleanse the earth. And usually these battles occur near water because they come out from the water and they, they try to fight with Wakina, but then when they lose, they try to go back to the water. So she's trying to destroy them before they get into the water because she can't go in the water. So that's why a lot of these battles happen along rivers. And this is what you know today as tornadoes. These are battles happening. So the problem was she couldn't go in the water. One day she saw a turtle and noticed that the turtle lives in the water but also comes on the ground, earth. So she asked the turtle to help her, and the turtle was kind of like, he didn't care about anything. He didn't even care about the other Unkjeji, or Unkjeji La. So the turtle said, well, why should I care? (laughs) So Wakiya said, think about it. If I give you cleansing power, you can cleanse the water. Everything needs water. The plants need water. Animals need water to drink, to live. Everything on this earth needs water. And if you have the power to keep it clean, that's going to make you a very, very important part of this world. And so the turtle said, yeah, that sounds pretty good. So they made a pact. They formed into an alliance, a very sacred alliance. So the turtle has the power of Wakiya. This is why turtles are very, very sacred. They're the most sacred animal on this earth. I'm not kidding. Because without water, we are nothing. Even eagles. Eagles have the tru of Shka, which is one of the members of the Wakantanka. They have that in their feathers. But the turtle is still more sacred than that. Because you see, an eagle cannot live without water. So turtles are considered the most sacred of all. And people don't realize that. So if you see one on the roadside, stop in your car or your bike and help it cross the road. He's trying to get to some water. He has a job to do. He's going to clean the water. So this is how the turtle was able to destroy the Unkjehila that we cannot see with our eyes. So what do you think that is? It's a microorganisms. That's why it's good if you're going to have a pond at your house to have fish in there or whatever, make sure you put a turtle there. It'll keep it clean. It'll keep the water safe. So everything can live that's in there. So that's how the sacred union between Wakiya and the turtle began. Pretty cool combination. You have this huge, giant being and this little, tiny turtle. <laughs> and together they cleanse the earth and the water. Isn't that cool? <laughs> I like that. I really like that. So that's how we regard the turtle. This is a very sacred animal. And then when the people come on the earth, the four directions are made. And the first direction is west. I'm going to focus on this one. I'm not going to tell the direction story. That's another topic, but I'm just going to focus on the West. This is the first direction, and its color is black. And it represents birth, beginning. Whereas in the Christian world, black is death, the dark side, limbo, hell, evil, demons. That's what the Christian world regards black as, but in the Lakota world, black is a good color. Because it represents birth. It represents beginning, new life. It's a beautiful thing. And Wakiya lives in the West. She has a teepee, a giant teepee, that's made out of giant cedar trees. 
in the West. So there were four brothers. And the one that was supposed to make the West direction, he was supposed to go to the opposite side of the entrance and make the first direction, the West direction. When he walked into this lodge, there was a giant eye opened, yeah? <laughs> and he looked at it, and everything went goofy inside of him. And Joaquin said, do what you're supposed to do. So he went and made that direction. And ever since then, this is another alliance for Joaquin. When he came out, his brothers noticed that he was different. His clothes were on backwards, and hair was in front of his face. <laughs> his moccasins were inside out, and <laughs> he came out. His brothers said, are you okay? And he said, no, I'm really not good, he said. <laughs> The thing is, he came out walking backwards. And when he came out, he said, Doksha ke, he said. <laughs> He's supposed to say hi. And here he said, Doksha ke, which is our way of saying until next time. We don't have a word for goodbye in our language. And so the boys were like, huh? <laughs> they were confused. He, he looked just goofy, yeah, because his clothes were backwards. His moccasins were inside out, and his hair was in front of his face. He was walking backwards, and he was talking weird. As soon they realized he's talking an opposite. He's saying the opposite of what he means. One instruction he got from Wakia was that whenever he needs help, call her name. So if he needs Wakia's help, how do you think he would call her name? From what information that I just gave to you? Is he going to say, Wakia, I need your help. Is he going to say that? What do you think? I'll let you think about that. Yeah. <laughs> but he was the first Heoka among the people. This is the male representation of Wakia. Remember, I said it's hermaphrodite. This is a sacred being. When Wakia presents herself as male, she's Heokha. Heokhas do everything in opposite. They do everything backwards. And oftentimes it makes people laugh. And this is cleansing. Laughter is cleansing. And sometimes when you're in trouble and you don't know how to get out, one way they teach you is to do everything backwards. And then you see the solution after that. So a heoka can do that. They're sacred people. And since this is the male representation of Wakia, only men can be heoka. The way you become heoka is that you have to receive a vision in which in this vision, the thunder and lightning is going to do something. So just because you dream about lightning, that doesn't mean you're supposed to be Heoka. It has to do something. In the Lakota world, when you dream of seeing something, that doesn't mean anything. It's the action of what that thing is doing. If you dream about a horse, that doesn't mean anything. But what is the horse doing? Because that action of the horse defines the dream. That's dream protocol. So same thing applies here. The thunder and lightning has to do something. And only holy people know this protocol. So when you dream of thunder and lightning, you better find one and tell them what you saw. Because this might be a call for you to be Heoka for at least one year. You have to have a very understanding wife if you're married, yeah? Because you're going to be saying, I hate you. <laughs> and she has to understand that what that means is that you love her. So 
this is how we got that Heoka concept. It's all about cleansing and healing. Wakia Heoka. It's all about cleansing and healing. Another thing that we get from Heoka and Wakia is that when the thunderstorm comes, burn cedar. As you hear the thunder and see the lightning, start burning cedar. Because when the smell goes up, Wakia will smell that. Remember what I said. Her teepee is made out of cedar. So when she smells this, she flies around it. This is why we don't have stories of tornadoes wiping out teepee camps. Because as soon as they heard Wakia, our ancestors started burning cedar. So all the cedar smoke goes up into the sky. When she smells it, she flies around it because that's a signal that there's people there. Isn't that beautiful? (laughs) So you can adopt that concept. Go buy some cedar and, and you can practice this. This is a Lakota way of life. And since these battles happen beside big rivers, this is why Indians didn't set up camp along the Mississippi River in America, because they know these things happen. Hurricanes, same thing. Intense thunderstorms are happening around the world. This is part of the cleansing that's going to happen now. It's just the beginning. Lakota Star Knowledge stories tell us that all of this happened before, but there was a way for people to survive. And it begins by living with the earth instead of trying to control it. You have to really watch the earth. You have to be in tune with it. And the sacred center begins within you. You hear the voice of the earth at your sacred center. And that's where you'll know where to go for safety. West represents beginning, rebirth. So sometimes things go wrong for whatever reason. Maybe somebody gets in a car accident and they bang up their head really bad or sometimes they experience something incredibly traumatic and it just messes up their mind. Or sometimes they're just born this way. Maybe there's a chemical reaction in the body when the woman is pregnant and it affects the development of the person's brain and something goes wrong. Well, there is a way to deal with that. And that involves wakia. It involves heokha. And it involves the west direction and everything that represents the west direction. That power from the West direction is used to cure mental illness. This is a very, very sacred thing. To read more about Lakota Star Knowledge Spirituality, you can read my book called Wichoha Otechige. You can see the book cover on the right side of this screen. This book contains the information to what I talk about on my Lakota spirituality videos. To purchase this book, please click below where it says Show More. Clicking on that link will open up the description below. And there you will see a link called To Purchase My Books. As you will see, it's an eBay link. Click on that eBay link and there you will see the information to get this book. To learn more about speaking the Lakota language, you can read my book called Chante et Tanha Ooglake, Speaking from the Heart. You can see the book cover on the right side of this screen. This book contains the information to what I talk about on my Lakota language mini lesson videos. To purchase this book, please click below where it says Show More. Clicking that link will open up the description below, and there you will see a link called 
to purchase my books. As you will see, it's an eBay link. Click on that eBay link and there you will see the information to get this book. Lila Pilamayelo. Thank you very much.